my uh, my goal is to uh, talk about small scale commercial poultry farms, uh, some nutrient management planning type structures and equipment that that we have. Um, I actually grew up on a small scale turkey farm in Oregon, and uh, we raised about six thousand turkeys a year. And so, some of these uh, examples kind of come from from personal experience, certainly from a from a uh, uh, byproduct uh, uh, type of uh, material that we need to make sure that we're dealing, that we will, we will be dealing with are certainly more tallies and manures. And then uh, we do have some in-house manure management um, that needs to uh, take place. And so we'll kind of talk about different pieces of equipment and structures that we can use for these, um, these type of, of scenarios. I guess in thinking about some required equipment, no matter kind of what size of operation you have, a tractor with a bucket and some kind of a some kind of a scrape blade, either a box blade uh, or or a straight blade. Uh, I think are are just required for no matter what size uh, operation that we have. This box blade is a good example of a of a PTO driven one that can be uh, raised and lowered with a uh, PTO drive and. Uh, you know, certainly that's a good example of a, a high quality blade, um, but a straight blade or, or uh, even a push blade, something that I think is, is uh, makes life a lot easier when we are dealing with manure and, and other materials that we need to make sure that we're uh, appropriately uh, uh, dealing with. A few considerations I thought of. Uh, we did, there are state regulations, uh, and they vary state to state on on siting of uh, and coverage of manures and compost. Uh, some states are more lenient in how we can uh, deal with them, or how how much they can be exposed to stormwater, and uh, they differ in 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 whether or not it's uh, considered an agricultural waste or if it uh, falls under a landfilling permit. Uh, and, and some states are more stringent and even, even an agricultural waste composting facility or operation may require a landfilling permit based on the, on the state that we're in. So those need to be considered. Also zoning restrictions, some, uh, some counties, some local municipalities may have uh, zoning regulations uh, that need to be investigated before we venture into some of these structures and, and operations that we might undertake. Well, we certainly can start very small. This is an example of uh, a very small chicken operation with uh, hand-driven uh, hand uh, composting drums. You can see here at the bottom, uh, there's a little handle that's attached where they, they can uh, rotate the uh, the material in, in that composter and certainly that that will work um, as we scale up other options and, and these are a couple examples of using some reclaimed materials uh, pallets and, and hay bales and um, and certainly this is uh, we can do very good composting uh, whether it be more tallies or uh, manure and in, in these kind of a little structures. This is a good example, a good time to talk about though, uh, sizing your structure. And the important thing to do when we size our, any kind of composting facility is to size it based on the bucket of your tractor. And so um, these, com these uh, pallet bins and even these um, uh, hay bale bins, I would certainly size the width of that based on the width of the tractor you're going to be using to uh, to accomplish your composting. So that's a very important uh, practice, no matter the size of the, of the structure we have, is to size it appropriately based on that tractor you're going to be using. Kind of moving up in size, this is an excellent example of a static composting bin uh, where either mortality composting or or uh, uh, manure, uh, litter, poultry litter composting can be done. A uh, couple things that, that uh, I wanted to show on this good example is, is certainly it's a roof structure and you have good overhang on the roof to make sure that stormwater uh, or the majority of the stormwater will stay out of their composting bins. 
you don't need additional stormwater getting in there and, and causing problems with, with composting. And then another po component here is this uh, concrete apron, which really makes uh, cleanup and just overall uh, sanitary uh, components of good composting and a good composting structure. It's a good example of that as well. And certainly if we're doing this for mortality, uh, as long as we can accomplish this kind of um, uh, formula we have kind of in this diagram here on the right, that's really what we're trying to accomplish in any of our composting structures that we have here. This is an example of in, an in-vessel segmented composter. And we actually have a lot of our poultry operations um, in, in all sizes of a commercial scale uh, starting to look at uh, this kind of uh, composting. It is a uh, in-vessel. This, this uh, unit is turning at all times to slowly uh, produce material that is that will then uh, be uh, uh, released here at the end. Uh, so there's a constant uh, a release of material coming out of the end. And these uh, are segments that can be added to. And so based on the size and scale or the, uh, as if you scale up, you can add additional segments to this composter. A lot of county commissions and zoning boards are looking at this kind of a, a, a composter to um, uh, uh, to help with uh, neighbor relations and with the with the assumption it helps to reduce flies and odors and the the uh, problem with with uh, uh, I don't know what happened there um, problem with um, uh, sometimes we have um, vermin and, and pests that kind of get into uh, the static bins so uh, certainly is a good option there. From a uh, manure composting, uh, windrow composting is, is a good option, particularly if we have a larger volume of material. And these windrow composters uh, have different sizes uh, that are available, certainly. This is a kind of a, a medium size, and they uh, range from very small to uh, self-propelled uh, windrow composters <coughs> that uh, can do a really good job of turning and aerating and, and oxygen, oxygenating the, the compost to help uh, help drive that that system. So, lots of options available there. <coughs> this is an example of a forced air composter. Again, the idea is we are uh, incorporating air all the time into the into the manure or the mortality compost. To help accelerate the uh, uh, the process, these two can be scaled up. They tend to be fairly expensive, but uh, they can be from one bin to multiple bins. Uh, and so we're kind of implementing more technology into our systems. We kind of go along here. Shredding equipment. Uh, once we're done with that uh, compost or uh, manure that we and take it to the field. Um, all kinds of uh, sizes that we can be used. This is an example of a small piece of, this is probably the smallest piece of spreading equipment I've ever seen. Uh, this is a company out of Canada. But uh, again, it can be, it can be sized to the, to the size of operation that you have. And, uh, you know, back to that small turkey farm I grew up on, we, uh, we spread by hand, and I would have loved to have had this kind of a piece of equipment uh, in my early youth. And uh, now the technology is much more advanced, it helps in, in that process. Uh, screening, um, there's always options. People interested in, in uh, producing a screen product, and this is just an example of a kind of a handmade, homemade uh, screening system here on the left to produce a more consistent product and and the, the people want to use uh, and, and to produce a bag product and there are bagging machines uh, this is an example of one from Australia <coughs> that uh, can be used to again produce a pro product on a small scale and then uh, with, the, with the end result of a saleable product from your small operation 
just a few slides about in-house uh, litter management or manure management for our small poultry farms. Our objectives are to control moisture and ammonia and to reduce pa reduce pathogens and then deal with the, the volume of manure that we have uh, that, that's produced on our farms. A couple of options that we do have, uh, and, and again, these are being used on, on commercial scale, uh, commercial poultry farms, but they also can be scaled to, to smaller um, facilities. We have uh, litter pulverizers that um, kind of mix and blend the manures, uh, and, and we have machines then that will kind of sift the manure, dropping the fines back to be reutilized and then taking out large chunks of manure that can be then land applied. And <clears throat> taking up to, to some larger scale operations where we're actually windrowing or composting manure in the house, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, producing these windrows to obtain the heat that we're looking for for pathogen control. And this is just a couple examples of some of the windrowing equipment that we're using in commercial operations that uh, can also be used in, in smaller uh, facilities as well. And I believe that's, that's the end of my uh, presentation on, on small scale commercial poultry operations. And, and I'll turn the time over to Carissa Wickens uh, from Florida to talk about uh, some of her uh, equipment that she has.